pastor, founding pastor of our church, uh, Bishop Eddie Gross. So I want to personally welcome you this morning. And this is the thing. I want you to remember this, equipfordestiny.org, because that's where you can go to submit your prayer request as well as sow a seed and give. So equipfordestiny.org. All right, so let's get started. We always like to start with a scripture of the week. And so for your reading, and this week is going to be Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4, I trust that you have your Bible, you have something to take notes, and that you're ready. You know, what's easy to do is also easy not to do. So I pray that you are focused and ready to receive the word this morning. Amen. So Ephesians 4, 1 through 3. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling. So that's Ephesians 4, 1 through 4. And that positions you well to join us on Thursday nights at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for our Bible study. All right, so let's get into the word that I have for you this morning. While you still have your Bibles there, I trust that you have it. I want you to turn to 1 Peter 5, 1 Peter 5, 6 through 10. 1 Peter 5, 6 through 10. Now I'm going to be reading through the um, from the New King James Version. Um, and so let's get started. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. And my anchor scripture this morning for you is in verse 10. After you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. And if I had to use the topic this morning, it's going to be a new you after this. A new you after this. Let's pray. Father God, I pray for breakthroughs for everyone listening and that your supernatural power will meet them at their point of need. Lord, I trust you for preaching. I trust you to do what only you can do in this moment in time. And I thank you in advance for what you're doing in the lives of everyone listening to this. In Jesus' name, amen. A new you after this. So everyone has a this, right? I want you to think about what your personal situation is that you wish would change right now whether it's your timeline or something that you're going through, uh, your health, your marriage, your finances, we all in this life have a this that we're like, Lord, what is going on? And so as I'm talking, I want you to bring that situation to this sermon, to meet for that, this, your situation to meet this sermon. And I want you to hold on to it as I walk through this. Now note, I said a new you. I did not say a new set of circumstances. Here's the thing about the text. What it does not say is that we don't get to decide when, we don't get to decide how long we suffer, and we are not entitled to an answer to why. If you had parents like mine and, and, and you start asking why, my dad used to say, because I said so. And so I want to set that statement up in the beginning, that premise up in the beginning that this is not about answering why, or being able to share with you when or how long. But what this is about is looking at what the word of God says can happen to you after this, after this. And I want to share the biblical perspective, first of all, on suffering. And then we're going to get to the biblical purpose of suffering. 
so that we can ultimately get to the result, the new, a new you after this. So speaking of perspective on suffering, I am a junkie with uh, stories of people overcoming hardship. And one of my favorite stories is by a man named Bob Whelan. Bob Whelan finished last in the New York Marathon in 1986. So you may be thinking, Cleaser, what's so special about that? Well, Bob Whelan in Vietnam stepped on a mine and he lost his legs. In fact, he was in a body bag that was completely zipped up until 30 minutes later, Bob started talking. Fast forward, Bob participates in marathons only using the knuckles of his hands because he doesn't have any legs. And when Bob finished last in the New York City Marathon, he said, but I finished ahead of the 300 million Americans who never started. I may have lost my legs, but I never lost my heart. And that brings me to my first point on the biblical perspective of suffering. Suffering equips us. Suffering equips us and is stated in 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 4. 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 4. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves have been comforted. What that means is that suffering equips us to be able to comfort others with the measure that the Lord comforts us. So the first perspective that you have to have on your this that you have brought to this sermon is that in your suffering, the Lord is equipping you. He is equipping you so that you will be able to be used for his good. Now, what is the link between experiencing suffering and being equipped with suffering? It deals again with point two of the perspective of understanding that suffering is multifaceted and that there are many things that we will go through. Psalm 34, 19 says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. Paul, again, in second Corinthians four, eight through nine says, we are hard pressed on every side yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. What this says is that we will have many trials and that those trials will be multifaceted. They will be physical. They will be spiritual. They will be emotional. Understanding that our, the, having that perspective helps you. If you've ever found yourself saying, Lord, it's just one thing after the other. Well, welcome to the life that we are living as believers. It is normal to have one thing right after the other. The word of God says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them from, from it all. It's important that you have that perspective, that your sufferings, your this, there are many and that they're multifaceted. Now don't lose hope. I'm going to get you to why, why this is good news for, for all of us. The the third perspective that you have to understand is that suffering includes a battle for your belief. Suffering includes a battle for your belief. Job teaches us that in Job 2, um, 9 through 10. Then his wife said to him, do you still hold fast to your integrity? Job is going through a lot of pain. Curse God and die. But Job says to his wife, You speak as one of the foolish women speaks. Shall we indeed accept good from God? And shall we not accept adversity? Job is telling us that we we are here to take both. And it's in our time of pain that suffering, there is a battle for our belief. And that battle for your belief is one that when we are suffering, it's revealed. My husband has a great way of saying this. He'll, he'll say, you know, you really don't know what you have, what kind of relationship you have until you disagree. And I agree with that a hundred percent because as long as I'm saying yes and you're saying yes, that's great. But what happens when you're yes and I'm a no, that's when you get to the root of what you really have. And so suffering allows us to get to the root. It like God uses that suffering for us to get to the root of what we really believe. Because it's easy to believe a God who is giving you everything you ask for. 
But what happens when he says no? What happens when he says not now? What happens when you feel you have waited longer than you want to wait? That's when he is doing that work in you. And that's when you have to have the perspective that this is a battle for my belief. This is a battle for my belief. And this is my time to choose to believe in a living God, in a living savior, even though I don't understand it, even though I don't agree with it, even though I have no idea how I'm going to make it. I trust the one who does know. So <clears throat> let me get some water. So now that I have given you the perspectives that you have to have on suffering, and I just want to review those so that you have them because that's important because we can't grasp what suffering, the new you on the other side of this until we have a, a clear, um, wrapped our arms clearly around how we need to see our suffering. So remember, suffering equips. Suffering is multifaceted and there will be many different types of sufferings. And the third thing, suffering is a battle for your belief. So nothing has gone wrong that it feels like a battle. That's the biggest thing that I really want you to get about this because this world has reduced the gospel to sound bites on social media that your blessings are coming and that there's no suffering included and that you, there's no stress included and that there's a God who just is open to giving you whatever you ask. And that is wrong theology. So then when challenges come, when you have an imbalanced perspective and you have a perspective that is, is secular, then you don't have an understanding of the purpose of your sufferings. So now that you have the perspective, I want to drop into this new, a new you after this. There are four things that Peter talks about that will happen after the suffering. And the first one is God will perfect you. God will perfect you. What exactly does that mean? That means lacking nothing necessary to completeness. It's a description of the process of achieving spiritual maturity. It's going from needing the milk to needing the, and, and, and craving the meat of what God has for you. So when you're thinking about the this that you're in right now, what is happening is that God is perfecting you. He's growing your maturity. It's the process of mature of maturation so that you no longer have to have things when you want it, how you want it, um, in order to give God glory. So that's the first thing. God is perfecting you in order to get to a new you after this. The second thing that Peter talks about in this text is God will establish you. God established laws for his people. He established the promised land. And he, when he is establishing, God is fixing what used to be wavering. He's, he is changing what used to be doubtful and weak. He's making it where it's established. It's, a, it's permanence. There's permanence to it. So that you're not uh, wavering in, in what you're choosing to believe. You have that perspective where you have an understanding that, yes, it's a battle for my belief, but I still choose to serve the Lord, even though my life is not going the way I planned, even though I wish this situation hadn't happened, even though I wish I had more fill in the blank. Even though I wish so-and-so would be different, even though I wish this child would be different, even though I wish this marriage would be different, even though I wish my family member would be different, even though I wish my heart would feel whole, even though this suffering with the right perspective allows God to establish you, to give a permanence in what you are believing the third thing that Peter talks about in order to have a new you after this is that God will strengthen you. This is the process of renewing your mind. And the key thing here is that this is not something you can do for yourself. 
This is something that we can only be empowered to do by the leading and the guiding of the Holy Spirit. It requires us to surrender, to surrender our plans, our will, our ways, and in complete surrender and submission to God's will, word, way, timeline. It says, Lord, not my, it's a way of saying, Lord, not my will, but your will in every category of your life. And I really want you to ask yourself, are you surrendered in every category of your life? And a good litmus test is where you have resistance to the way things are. And the way that shows up is you are arguing with a reality that you cannot change. That can show up in the turn in, in, in the form of you, you're arguing with the fact that someone shouldn't have passed. You're arguing with the fact that someone shouldn't be sick. You're arguing with the fact that of your employment status. You're arguing with the fact of your emotional status. When we surrender, then we take, we, we, we literally have a clean slate to say, Lord, show me what to put on this page of my life. And that's what I want you to do. Ask the Lord to show you, to renew your mind. Your mind, renewing your mind speaks to your inner man. In Ephesians 3, 16, um, it says that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened. There's that word again with might. How? Through his spirit in the inner man. And how do you strengthen the inner man? By submission. To the, to the will of God and by studying the word of God. That's why I invited you at the top of this to Bible study. It is the most important investment of your time to know the word of God and to increase your relationship with God. Knowing the word of God and, and increasing your relationship with God is very different than being able to post quotes about God or wear t-shirts about God. It is an invitation into immersing yourself into not just knowing, but to experiencing and to surrendering and to allow the suffering, your this, to ultimately strengthen you from the inside out. This has less to do with you, uh, with us getting everything we want and more to do with being able to be used by God with everything that we have. Because regardless of how long we're here, we're here for one purpose, and that is to give God glory. And so a new you after this is a you strengthened from the inside. It's a new you who's established, fixed, not wavering. It's a new you who's been perfected. You are more mature. You don't unravel. You seek wisdom and understanding as opposed to having your way. So the fourth thing I want to say, oh, before I say that, you know, years ago there was a, they they had these little bracelets that would say, what would Jesus uh, do? And What I want to offer to you is that we need to say or ask, what would Jesus think? What would Jesus think? That's that renewing our mind. And that's something that we have to do every single day. We have to die daily to the fallen part of us ourselves that wants our way, that thinks we have the audacity to know better, that thinks we have the audacity to think things that we know how things should be going, when we don't. When we don't. The fourth thing that Peter talks about is that God will settle you. God will settle you. Whenever we're suffering, we must have complete confidence that our suffering is meant to produce restoration, strength, and steadfastness. It's never what we're producing ourselves, but God who is designing us and conforming us into the image of his son. And that's the ultimate goal is to make us more like Christ. 
and to know that no matter what, our suffering is never, ever in vain. Romans 8.28 is the anchor for this. For we know that all things work together for the good, for those who are called according to his purpose. All things. And it does not say and does not mean that all things are good. But God has the ability to take what isn't so good for us (laughs) and what is good and put it all together and make it work for the good. The good meaning to give him glory. To give him glory. And that even in our suffering, that it is so that he can get the glory. Because when we get to those places in our lives where it's more than what we can do, that's a good place to be. Because that's when we can invite God into it. And that's when we will have a testimony that we know, that we know, that we know, that we could not have done that without God. And understanding that helps you to take all of the pieces of the puzzle of your life. And to not only have the right perspective on your suffering, but to understand the purpose of your suffering and to really hold on to the new you after this, the promise that there is a new you after this, who's going to talk different, who's going to respond different, who's going to be able to give God glory in a different way. That's the ultimate goal of our sufferings. So to wish that we don't have suffering is to wish that we're not conformed. To wish that things are just always perfect is to simultaneously wish and know and think that we know better than God. So my invitation to you to bring your situation to this, I just want to go over that again. To know that your situation, your current situation, God is using that situation to perfect you. And I want you to start looking for how is this changing my maturity? How is this taking me to another level in God? I don't know about you, but when things don't go well, I talk to God even more. (laughs) In my times of devastation, I prayed harder than I ever had. And I want you to look at that situation you're going through. How is it establishing you? How is it creating a, a um, unwavering belief? How are you winning that battle of belief and saying, no, this, I know God is keeping me. How is this situation strengthening you? It's important to look at how your mind is being renewed, even in the midst of this situation so that you can see there is purpose even to the suffering. And that purpose is so much bigger than you. And the fourth thing that I want to say is how is it settling you? How is it settling you and conforming you? You know, my background is chemical engineering and I always love uh, the way the elements are put together. And you know, sodium, I didn't say salt, sodium by itself is actually dangerous. But sodium combined with chlorine makes sodium chloride, which we all know is salt. And it's such a perfect example. The sodium has to be uh, gone, taken through a process in order to be combined with the chlorine to make the table salt that you and I use every day. And I use that analogy because that's what God does in our suffering. He takes things that left alone would be just harmful, but he puts them together and he takes them through a process where we can be used for his glory with left, which left alone and isolated individually. These are things that could be harmful, but when they are put together in the kingdom and in our journey, then we become that salt, like that salt. And that what was once something that was just suffering and harmful, like the sodium, when combined with what God combines it with all of the pieces of your your life, then you have something that could be used. Matthew 5, 13 says you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? 
It is then good for nothing, nothing, but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. So I want you to hold on to that. Maybe you have a this, a situation that you don't understand, but I can promise you, and not because I said it, but because the word of God says it, that there's a process And if you will surrender to that process, just like that, the element of sodium, if you will surrender to that process and allow yourself to be made over and made again and allow the Lord to combine this with everything, he is working it for the good. And that ultimately you will be used in a greater way because you surrender to the process. And that's how you get to a new you. After this. And that's good news. It may not feel good. I know it can hurt. And the dark nights of our soul are an invitation for the light of Christ to come into our lives in ways like never before. I'm not sitting here trying to minimize the pain that you may be in. But I am sitting here unapologetically determined to get you to see that after you have suffered a while, he will perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. That's his word, and he cannot lie. But you have to open your heart to him and to receive him, and you have to release the way you want your life to go. And once you have done that and you have invited him into your life and you say, Lord, have your way. Then the promise of that declaration is a new you after this. (laughs) All right. That's what God has given for me to give to you this morning. And I don't want to take for granted that you have not made that declaration that Jesus is the Lord and Savior of your life. If you have, great. Recommit to it and still do these steps. If you haven't, great, because today is the day that you can. And you can go to equipfordestiny.org and you can select the button that says, Jesus is my Lord and Savior. And we will walk you through their prayers for you there. And if you need us to talk to you, we are available. We may be online, but we are not out of access. There, we, we have, you have access to us. Don't let another day go by thinking that your suffering is in pain. I mean, in vain. Don't let another day go by arguing why instead of surrendering to who? The one Savior, the one Lord the one God who is able to keep us, the one Lord who is calling us to eternity because these present sufferings will seem like nothing in eternity. But there are promises for now and there are promises for next. And you have access to that when you declare that Jesus is the Lord and Savior of your life. All right, a new you after this. That's the promise. And you hold on to that no matter what. Here at Equip for Destiny, we love you and we want you to know God loves you too. Enjoy the rest of this new day and we hope to see you on Thursday nights at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Bible study. God bless.